The opportunities and burdens that are placed upon a person that chooses to produce culture or be a part of that chain are very significant and come with uh, a very great deal of responsibility because you are creating culture, you are creating reality. But if that should ever disturb you, if you should ever feel weak or not equal to the task, reflect upon a few words given to us by one of this country's greatest cultural ancestors. All labor that uplifts humanity has dignity and importance and should be undertaken with painstaking excellence. So I was brought to painting first. I'd always been drawing, uh, you know, doodles and cartoons and whatnot. When I was about 12, uh, my mother read an article in the paper that there was a local artist who had a congenital eye defect and was going blind. And before he did go fully blind, he wanted to train as many people as he could free of charge. I started watching Bob Ross's The Joy of Painting. Um, and drawing kind of fell to the wayside. I would do it when I was in a place where I couldn't be painting. And I enjoyed it a great deal. As I was going through high school, I really dug into painting and enjoyed it a lot and got some training through art classes and realized that I didn't want to stop doing it. Had a toss up. I was equally interested in studying art and law. My two uncles that were both CPAs and worked as chief financial officers, they were very concerned for me. You know, how are you going to provide for yourself? With an interest in law, you might have a more stable life there. I appreciated their concern and jumped into art. It struck me as the place where I could explore more things on a whim. Where as long as I knew how to manipulate my instruments, I could explore worlds that did exist and worlds that didn't yet exist. And I think that's a lot of what I was jumping into with more surrealist paintings of bizarre like pipe organ thing, it's a mix of a pipe organ and a giraffe and a heart rising up out of a crack in the ground. You know, crazy stuff. I started working as a studio assistant, and that's actually when I noticed that it wasn't just I looked at teaching as a viable career option, but something I really enjoyed. Look how a tool can work for you, and instantly they didn't think of it as like this thing they had to fight, but this thing that liberated them. It was a hoot, oh my goodness. It was amazing to get to have that, to get to vicariously have that sense of discovery again by helping another person have that experience. The biggest thing that I want my drawers to leave the class with, apart from a basic sweep of skills, is the awareness that they have the power to improve. For people to leave their educational program really with a great deal of self-awareness and higher level cognitive ability so that they can have a meaningful life because that leaves room for them to have what I value, that experience of discovery. There was something that you were excited about. And that might change. But what shouldn't change is that you are working towards making your life satisfying for you. I brought in this element of democracy where the students vote on what their homework's going to be. Sometimes discussions would get really kind of passionate and, and robust, and so I'd kind of bang on my desk with my, with my ring. One of the students said that one day, like, you need a gavel. I said, oh, that's funny. No, then the next week I showed up early and the gavel was actually resting on the desk. I actually opened that meeting's session with wrapping the gavel, and everybody actually, well, a lot of people applauded. I think some people applauded because everybody else was. That was a really big high point because there are going to be a lot of times where individuals come up to an instructor and say, oh, I had a great time. I learned a lot. You know, I'm sorry that I thought PVC was bullshit and a waste of time. I'm using it all the time. I'm really grateful for your generosity in the class, things like that. And then that is rewarding. But the notion that I'd connected that well with an entire class, I actually reached everybody, not just the meaty part of the bell curve. I actually reached the class. Like that, that was really awesome. I mean, I tell them by the end of the term, we've just spent a season teaching you how to manipulate the perceptions and emotions of other human beings. We've taught you introductory mind control. I hope you use it for good, or at least the least evil. But these strategies are all about how human beings engage with and understand the world. I'm gonna stop talking now. Fuck if I know. I'm swearing more as we go on, it's good, I'm natural. Yes. It's, yeah. Yeah, ah. <laughs> yeah, so like that. So you got the rod right there.
That's a wrap. Boom. Yeah. I'll give you your clacker. <laughs>